This video will discuss how to determine the irreducible representations of a given set of objects in a given point group. So we'll start by discussing the quantity capital gamma, which is defined as the reducible representation. So gamma is what is called a reducible representation because it is a sum of different irreducible representations. So the example we're going to give here is we have the water molecule, which has a C2V point group with principal axis C2 bisecting the bond angle here. Uh, the plane of the molecule is the ZY plane, as I have defined here, which is sigma V prime. Perpendicular to that and parallel to C2, we have sigma V, which is the ZX plane. So what we want to do is figure out the irreps of our valence orbitals in this molecule. So I'm looking at the 2S of the oxygen, 2PZ, 2PY, 2PX, and the 1S orbitals of each hydrogen atom. So I want to determine what is the irreducible representation of these six valence atomic orbitals. So in order to do that, I'm going to apply all of the symmetry operations in our point group to all of those objects. So these six orbitals, I'm going to apply all four symmetry operations to them and see the result. And then I'm going to compute the trace of the resulting matrix, which represents those uh, operate, which represents those operators in this representation of these six orbitals. I'll discuss trace briefly below. We're going to do that for all the operators, and then we're going to use a procedure we'll define below to decompose that into irreducible representations. Okay, so first we have the identity. So if we act with, if we act with the identity upon all six of these atomic orbitals, they're all going to stay the same. So 1s1, 1s2, 2s, 2pz, 2py, 2px, they're all going to stay the same under the identity. So you could say that the matrix which represents the identity under this representation is equal to a 6 by 6 identity matrix. Because 1s stayed 1s, 1s2 stayed 1s2, 2s stayed 2s, 2pz, 2py, 2px, etc. None of them were transformed into any other orbitals. They all remained 100% themselves, entirely the character that with, with, with which they started. Okay, so now what is the trace, as I said up here, of this matrix? So the trace of the operator, which is, which is, going, which is the character of that operator, is going to be the sum of all the diagonal elements of the matrix representation of that operator. So this is a six by six matrix. The diagonal is all the points where, um, where the column number and row number are the same. So going down here is going down the diagonal. And there are six um, dimensions to this matrix. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So summing up element one, one, two, two, three, three, et cetera, gives me 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, which gives me 6. So that is the character of the E operator in this representation of these six orbitals. So the reducible representation, the character of the reducible representation of E is equal to 6 in this instance. If we do the same thing for C2, so let's look at this. So the 1s orbital is going to move from being here to being there. So it gets transformed from 1s1 to 1s2. So this diagonal would be zero in this case because it doesn't have any, it doesn't have any percent of its original self in what it gets transformed into under the C2 operation where it becomes H2. So that's a zero. Plus 1s2 rotates by 180 degrees becomes 1s1. So it gets transformed into a completely different orbital. It has 0% uh, representation as itself in this, in, this new, uh, in this new operation. All right, then if we do the 2s orbital in oxygen stays the same, so that's a 1. The 2pz orbital in oxygen stays the same, rotating around there, so that's a 1. The 2py orbital switches lobes, it's positive on this side, negative on that, and then we rotate switching the positive and negative lobes. 
So it stays the same orbital, but it has switched signs. So that's a minus one in its character. For C2 acting on 2px, that similarly is going to switch the positive and negative lobes, and it's going to become the negative of itself. So 0 plus 0 plus 1 plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 gives me 0. So the character of this reducible representation under C2 is equal to 0. All right, for sigma v, once again, 1s1 becomes 1s2. 1s2 becomes 1s1, so those have zero character of themselves in their transform result. Um, one, uh, 2s stays the same, it's on the plane. 2pz stays the same, it's on the plane. Um, 2py gets reflected through the plane, it becomes the negative of itself, minus 1. And 2px is in the plane as well, so it stays the same, so that's a plus 1. 0 plus 0 plus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. For sigma v prime, we have the 1s1 is in the plane. It stays the same. 1s2 is in the plane. It stays the same. Those are both 1s. We have uh, 2s is in the plane. It stays the same. That's a 1. 2pz is in the plane. It stays the same. That's a 1. 2py is in the plane. That's a 1 stays the same, and 2px is perpendicular to the plane. It switches the positive and negative lobes, becomes the negative of itself. That's a minus 1. Those all add up to 4. Okay, so our total reducible representation of these six orbitals in the C2v point group is 6, 0, 2, 4. It has a character of 6 under E, 0 under C2, 2 under C sigma v, and 4 under sigma v prime. Okay, so this reducible representation can be separated into a linear combination of irreducible representations. Our four irreps in C2v are a1, a2, b1, and b2, and their characters under each of these operations is listed here. a1 is 1, 1, 1, 1, a2 is 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, etc. So some combination of these four irreps adds up to the value 6, 0, 2, 4. So this is some coefficient times a1 plus some coefficient times a2 plus some coefficient times b1 plus a coefficient times b2. So the way we figure out what these coefficients are, um, we could guess and check. Um, we could just uh, get, you know, get lucky and find out what they are. But the systematic way involves what's called a reduction formula. So each of these coefficients, the coefficient in the ith irreducible representation, um, so the coefficient for a given irrep, a1, a2, etc., is equal to 1 over the order of the group. Remember from our previous video on non abelian character tables that the order of a group is the total number of operations in the group. So that's 4 here. So 1 over 4 is going to precede all these calculations. Then we sum over all of the operations of the reducible representation under that operation times the character of that irrep under that operation. So our reducible representation is 6 under E. A1 is 1 under E, so 6 times 1 plus 0 times 1, plus 2 times 1, plus 4 times 1. Each time we're multiplying the character of our reducible representation times the character of that irrep for that coefficient under the same operation. So that gives us 6 times 1, plus 0 times 1, plus 2 times 1, plus 4 times 1 is equal to 12, divided by the 4, is 12 over 4 equals 3. So there's a coefficient of 3. There's three a1s inside of this reducible representation. If we repeat for a2, the coefficient uh, little a2 here, we get 1 fourth times 6 times 1 plus 0 times 1 minus 2 times, sorry, plus 2 times minus 1. So I have the minus out in front there, 2 times minus 1. 4 
times minus 1. That gives me 0 over 4 is 0. For b1, I have 1 fourth times 6 times 1 plus 0, zero times minus 1 plus 2 times 1 plus 4 times minus 1 gives me 4 over 4 equals 1. So there's 1 b1 in this reducible representation. And for a 4, the coefficient for b2, 6 times 1 plus 0 times minus 1 plus minus 2 times minus 1 plus 4 times 1. It gives me 8 over 4, which is equal to 2. <clears throat> So my final reducible representation, the irreducible representation of this reducible representation is 3a1 plus b1 plus 2 times b2. So effectively, inside these six orbitals, three of them combine in a way to make an a1 molecular orbital. There's one combined b1 molecular orbital in these six atomic orbitals. And there are two b2 orbitals inside these six atomic orbitals. So these six atomic orbitals will combine in a way such to generate 3a1, 1b1, and 2b2 molecular orbitals, which are consistent with the symmetry requirements of this point group. Okay. Notice also that the character of this reducible representation under E is 6. This is a six-dimensional uh, reducible representation, and all of these coefficients uh, added up to six. So 3a1 plus b1 plus 2 times b2, that added up to six. That's because all of these are one-dimensional irreducible representations. So six one-dimensional irreps added together give you one six-dimensional reducible rep. If there were uh, an E ear up here, which is two dimensional, then that would have counted for two. So if there were a T ear up here, that would have counted for three. So the sum of the dimensionalities of all the, of all the ear ups here add up to the dimensionality of our reducible rep. So we've taken our six valence atomic orbitals, applied all the operations to them, computed the trace or the characters of each of the matrices applied to those orbitals, um, and then use our reduction formula to decompose those into EREPs. And lastly, you'll notice if you look at 3 times this row, plus 1 times this row, plus 2 times this row, you'll notice that each of those columns will add up to the 6024, which is the total result of my uh, reducible representation there, which you can use to double check that you've got the correct result once you've applied the reduction formula.